Thank you very much. Okay, let's dive in the sustainability of Bitcoin. And let's first just take a little step back, especially for the central bankers in the room. Blockchain technology in general is inefficient by design. That's not a bug, it's a feature. So I've been seeing some news messages uh, popping up last few days where some parties were testing blockchain technologies and they figured out this, hey, this technology is slow and expensive. Well, that's not so odd. Because if you look at the steps to, lock a, uh, to run a blockchain network from uh, the, the original Bitcoin white paper, and you take out what is proof of work, then you find that there is still a lot of repeated effort in running a blockchain network, regardless of what kind of consensus algorithm you put into it. Um, independent validation. Again, not a bug, it's a feature, but in general it will just slow things down and make it very expensive. Now obviously we're talking about Bitcoin here, and when we're talking about Bitcoin we're diving into the mining, the proof of work, and that really amplifies Bitcoin's energy consumption massively. So let's look, on, look, let's look at some network statistics first. The Bitcoin network runs on about 10,000 nodes, which is, if they were all single computers, would be perfectly fine. Only there are millions of mining devices hiding behind these nodes, and altogether they are producing 53 quintillion hashes per second. Um, we actually saw the 53 once, one time before today, and we also saw a number that said 43 quintillion. Um, so what's the correct number? Well, the 43 was based on a single day observation, and 53 is based on a full week of observations. It's a statistical error. If you have more data, you get a more reliable number, so this is probably more accurate. Um, and where it gets really interesting is if we look at the ratio of, of um, hashing operations to actual use transactions. So in 2018, the whole Bitcoin network didn't process much more transactions than 81 million. Um, that's two and a half per second. So overall, we have 20 quintillion hash operations every second of the day, and we have two and a half transactions. No wonder it is very resource intensive. Um, by the way, the whole banking industry was handling about 500 billion non-cash transactions in total, so that's uh, roughly 16,000 transactions per second. Uh, if, uh, if Bitcoin wants to scale up, it has a long way to go in that sense. So, let's talk numbers. How much energy? For the whole network, per year, 46 terawatt hours. Now, I like to do comparisons because these numbers are a little bit meaningless otherwise. It is pretty much the same electrical energy consumption as a country like Switzerland. The footprint per single transaction comes down to 463 kilowatt hours. That's the same footprint as your, well, actually for a German household, it's probably a month of electricity. The Americans are known to be using a little bit more on average. Um, that's a pretty big number. And by the way, uh, I just n here heard I can't average per transaction. Well, um, I, uh, I can explain metrics like carbon footprints, but the whole idea is that you include direct and indirect costs. And without energy consumption, there wouldn't be Bitcoin transactions. So obviously, you can attribute these costs. Um, oh, and this is also an interesting number. 82 megawatt hours per Bitcoin mine. If you mine one Bitcoin, or sorry, that's actually 8.4 Bitcoin worth of gold. So even mining gold is relatively more efficient than mining Bitcoin. Um, now those numbers are big, but what I find particularly interesting, or actually the most shocking, is the rate of change. Because we went to, an energy co to the energy consumption of a country like Switzerland in less than a year. 
Um, this is a nice little graphic produced by The Economist. They don't try to come up with a realistic energy, num uh, energy consumption number, they just show the minimum energy consumption for the network. Um, and as you can see, clearly in 2018 it completely exploded where it is, was negligible in the years before. Um, by the way, they also know that the energy use kept rising after the Bitcoin bubble burst. That's where my work comes in. So I actually predict and explained why this happened in my last year's paper titled Bitcoin's Growing Energy Consumption. It was published in May of last year and the data I used was from March. Um, but coming back at the changes that happened, so we were in 2017 looking at 16 terawatt hours of energy, electrical energy per year. In 2018, we went up 63, uh, almost 300% increase in one year. Per transaction, 350%. Why? Because the amount of transactions that were processed actually went down in 2018. More energy use, less transactions. Um, Oh, I should note, uh, at the start of the day, someone mentioned uh, there was a prediction that Bitcoin would bo boil the oceans. Someone took my, my work, they took these percentages and then kept on extrapolating with it. If you actually read my work, um, they should have realized they should have stopped <laughs> at, the, uh, at the last numbers. Just a side note. So, okay, what does this mean? in? in terms of environmental impact. In order to know that, we first have to figure out, okay, where is mining actually taking place? Because the carbon intensity depends on where you're mining, what power your source you're using. Um, the global uh, cryptocurrency benchmarking study shows that in 2017, there was a majority of the network located in China. And the year after that, that changed a little, but not so much. By the way, it's really hard to establish where miners are located ultimately, um, because even this map has a few issues. You can see the dot on Quebec is really large. Um, under oath, the um, power company in Quebec, Hydro-Quebec, declared for the local energy board that they were only supplying 15 megawatts worth of power to miners, and they were forecasting 110 for 2019. Um, so obviously, the real size of the dot should be, as indicated, much smaller. Okay, we can get back to deck after. So the point and my only key point is that the majority is close is in China, right? So that's and the trend is still that miners are moving to China. Why? Because tariffs. The miners are being produced in China, Bitmain is in China, and it's getting more expensive to move these machines outside of China. So they were located in China and they are probably going to be in China for some time more, unless China bans Bitcoin, or specifically Bitcoin mining. Yeah, they were considering that some time ago, we'll see if that actually happens, but if that doesn't happen, we'll see more miners moving to China and the Chinese grid isn't exactly clean. Well, if you're paying 25% tariffs, good luck with that. So anyway, I made a carbon intensity no, um, estimate for the whole network uh, based on the previous uh, mentioned studies. And ultimately, that comes down to a carbon intensity of um, 475 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. Now, as long as the majority of mining is taking place in China, you're going to end up with this carbon intensity. I will explain later why. Um, but what does that mean in terms of carbon footprint for the whole network? 
So the whole network has a carbon footprint of about 30 megatons. The interesting bit is the carbon footprint per Bitcoin transaction is 370 kilograms of carbon dioxide. The same carbon footprint as 900,000, over 900,000 visa transactions or over 6,000 hours of watching TV. You can't make this look any prettier. You can come up with the craziest numbers. You can say, oh, the whole network is being run on renewable energy. Even still, renewable energy does have some carbon footprint left. If you take 1% of my carbon intensity and apply it to the network, you are left with a carbon intensity per Bitcoin transactions of 3.7 kilograms. Still ridiculous, because there's still 9,000 visa transactions. You can't put lipstick on a pig. So, what are the solutions? Getting back to renewable energy. There's a few interesting considerations when you're thinking about applying renewable energy to Bitcoin mining. Um, the first thing is, the renewable energies are generally an intermittent energy source. If you're looking at Sichuan in China, during the wet season, production three times higher than in the dry season. That's production. Then you also have fluctuations in demand. If you look at Quebec, during the winter time, they depend on electrical heating. Demand goes up 65%. The surpluses, we keep hearing that Bitcoin mining is done with surpluses that nobody uses. Those surpluses aren't around all the time, especially not when your production drops or your demand peaks. Bitcoin mining increases your base load demand. These machines are running 24-7, non-stop, so you have to supply, supply them with power at all times. It's fundamentally, let's say, tough to combine with renewable energy sources. This uh, figure gives a little bit more illustration on why that is. So if you have a new generation of mining machines, the amount of money they will earn will decrease rapidly, simply because everyone wants to have the most efficient machines, everyone adds machines to the network, the network hash rate goes up, and a single machine performs less and less and less. So each day or each second of the day that you shut off, you miss out on a level of income that will never come back. Um, second problem with renewable energy, it's ideally green, but technically it's not always green. Um, Sichuan again. And uh, we just, I'm like Sichuan because uh, the reference that was made just a few minutes ago was to the coin shares report that said half of the um, mining is done in Sichuan, which by the way, if that is true, wouldn't be very great in terms of decentralization, but we'll keep that on the side. Um, if that is true, then still Sichuan doesn't really have green green energy, not even from hydropower, because they struggle with, well, first of all, the reason there's excesses on their grid is because they can't export it, but obviously when the production falls, yeah, on the left, three times more production during the wet season. When production falls, they need coal-based power. And they can't import it because the same reason they can't export their excess. So what do they do? They actually construct more coal-based power plants locally to act as a backup for when their renewable production falls. Ouch. So ultimately, if you look at the Sichuan province, the carbon intensity of the grid is actually comparing, comparable to using natural gas for mining. That's not green at all. Um, last note, we're talking a lot about how the hydropower. Um, reservoirs can be significant sources of methane. Now, that's still being researched, but 
uh, I just want to say that methane is definitely a more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, actually a factor 34 times more. So um, hydropower isn't the ideal source um, in any case. Oh yeah, and there's one more thing. No matter how much green energy you put into the Bitcoin network, you're always going to be left with electronic waste. Um, this is some footage from last year where um, Bitcoin mining machines were being thrown out. And this is often forgotten because everyone talks about energy use, but this is specialized hardware designed with a single purpose, mining Bitcoin, and when they're done doing that, they're obsolete and you can uh, either bring them to the incinerator or to a landfill. Um, altogether, the network has a electronic waste potential of 11 kilotons per year. By the way, this is all from my latest paper, Renewable Energy Will Not Solve Bitcoin Sustainability Problems, uh, published in March this year in Joule. Um, and this electronic waste problem uh, or e electronic waste amount, as I was saying, is comparable to what a country, small country, like Luxembourg is putting out per year. But it comes on top of the electrical energy consumption as a country like Switzerland. It just adds up. Um, 135 grams per Bitcoin transaction, that's the footprint. Um, I made a very optimistic maximum on um, Visa. Uh, I assumed each of their servers weighed 100 kilos and they were being replaced every year. Uh, then still, the e-waste footprint is 30,000 times bigger for a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, and as I just noted, most of that just goes to environmentally damaging landfills and incinerators, so you'll never have a green Bitcoin. No way. Oh, um, this whole story doesn't include the production process and it's just about mining. There's also an ecosystem that we're not considering, and there's parties like Coinbase, BitPay, whatever, uh, Bitcoin ADMs, not considered. So, how about the Lightning Network? Well, I have a question for you. Let's assume that the Lightning Network or whatever solution is found for Bitcoin scaling problem, and we can do the entire banking industry on top of Bitcoin. We don't need the banking industry anymore. What's going to happen to the value of Bitcoin? What do you think? Is it going to be the same value? Is it going to be increasing 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times? Or even more? Maybe a little show of hands who thinks it's going to be the same value? 10 times increase? 100 times? Okay, now seeing some hands. 1,000 times? More than 1,000 times? <laughs> okay, definitely no less than 100 times. Cool, but what does that mean in terms of energy consumption? So my work that was published last year establishes a relationship between value and um, energy consumption. And applying that very strictly would result in these numbers. The funny thing is, even if Bitcoin would consume the same amount of energy as it's consuming currently, it's still less efficient than the current system. Why? Because the global data center energy use is around 200 terawatt hours. Um, and obviously Visa is a very efficient example, but you can estimate the banking need to be maybe around 20 terawatt hours. At a 10 times increase, Bitcoin will most likely exceed the total production we're getting from solar. Um, the solar PV capacity is 600, 460 terawatt hours per year. We took decades to get to that number. Um, at 100 times the relationship, by the way, the bigger this number gets, the less linear this relationship will get, but let me just summarize it like, if it stays the same, it's going to be bad. If it's going to be a 10 times increase, it's going to be a very serious problem. At a 100 times increase, it's going to be a nightmare. And at a 1,000 times increase or more, we're probably all dead. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, so um, 
Uh, that's why I was actually going to say this is a bit too much of a simplification, but obviously transaction fees are going to be more relevant in the future. There's people predicting there will be a 100,000 transaction fee on the, with the Lightning Network, which would then replace the block reward. And if that happens, uh, you actually will be probably be consuming 80 to 90 percent of the global um, energy consumption. Sorry, what? Well, it would, be, it would be nice if it was true, because then we really need a Dyson Sphere to make it happen. Um, but by the way, you just predicted a thousand times price increase. Um, if I just go back a little, uh, then you also need the Dyson Sphere to make it happen, because it's three on, almost 300% of our current global pr energy production. Uh, and uh, by the way, that's your prediction. Of uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap up. <laughs> so, what would work? Well, for example, replacing the proof of work with a proof of stake algorithm. I'm not. <laughs> I'm hearing there's a lot of um, fans for that idea. But what it would achieve if it was done, it would reduce the energy need by 99.99%, and you would do away with the incentive to reduce uh, to produce singular purpose, specialized singular purpose hardware. Uh, obviously, I'm okay with whatever alternative as long as it works. Uh, and by the way, proof of work is not Bitcoin, people. Um, somebody on my Twitter feed pointed out nicely that uh, proof of work is designed for a very specific goal. Security, immutability, and censorship resistant. It is not a magic wand that turns air into Bitcoin. So, as long as we keep the eye on the objective, then we might be able to find a better alternative than the current proof of work system. So we can re replace these steps into running a blockchain network. That's all. <laughs>